Greetings and salutations everybody out there in podcast land. This is the Judo Chop Suey Podcast. And I'm your host, Judo Dave Roman. What's going on everybody? Very excited to be back behind the microphone. There's lots going on in my life personally with the podcast and I, I can't wait to share it with you all. I had a really nice workout over the weekend with the fine folks at United Judo of Tampa. I decided to go there on the recommendation of a listener to this esteemed podcast. So I made the drive up to to the new Tampa area of of Tampa. and, And well, first, let me get this out of the way. What should have been a 40 minute drive ended up taking an hour and a half because of the morons on the road that can't seem to drive normally getting up and down the highway. I 75. For whatever reason, through Tampa is a nightmare. It's a cluster, you know what. And and good riddance to the snowbirds. They're finally leaving the area, so I can get back to normal driving in in the area in in my town, my city. But these people, they come down every six months to enjoy the Florida shun- sunshine. They cause accidents. They get in my way. I get very frustrated, and it was just, I was I left my home at ten thirty, thinking to myself, you know what take me 40 minutes to get there i have a little bit of water i'll talk with the instructors and here i am strolling in at 1201 i hate being late but they understood the lead instructor there john was is a really nice guy and and same goes with miles and john has a a nice judo family up there his kids are doing judo his wife's doing judo It's, it's a really great recreational club and i highly recommend that if you're in the tampa bay area don't come and see me. Go see United Judo of Tampa. You don't really want to see me. Well, you can if you want. I work out at Riverview Judo, and that's where I assist I assist my, my sensei there, and, and we have a nice kids class there. But but this was a this was a really large class. I would have to say it's about twenty people or so. Now granted, this club is out of the YMCA, so it's it's Four YMCA members, so but you can walk in there as a guest. I didn't even bother. I just walked in there like a boss and was like, "Where's your judo club?" They're like, "Back there, sir." All right, thanks. And they didn't check my ID. They didn't check to see if I was a member. I know I can't get away with that for too long, but I was grateful that the staff looked the other way so I could just get a workout in. And it was nice because this was the first time in a very long time, and I mean a very long time. Where I went to a judo club and I was just a student. I took part in the uchikomis. I took part in the warm-ups. You know, they did ask me to demonstrate something. And I I decided to demonstrate my favorite combination, which is Tomoinagi to Osotogari. They were thoroughly confused. and But they tried it and everybody failed. I'm kidding. No, uh, nobody, <laughs> nobody does that combination. I wish I could. No, I really don't. That that would do, how, how would that happen? Do I just bounce off the floor and and come back up and <laughs> soda guard? I don't know. Uh, for you non judo people that actually listen to this podcast, you'd have to look know what both throws are. I'm not going to go into explaining it. Anyway, I know I'm rambling on here, which I'm going to get to a little bit of this rambling stuff because I've had some people comment on it. Anyway, so great workout. It was nice to get in there and just be a student, do some uchikomi do some Rondori, meet a lot of nice, enthusiastic people for judo. So if you're in town, go visit them, go visit me, and get a feel for the judo community in Tampa Bay. I've got a special announcement to make. Listen to this. You hear that? Do you know what that is? Here, I'll give you another hint. Ah! That is me drinking water out of my brand new water bottle from judoinside.com. Now, the water bottle wasn't the only thing I received from this, what essentially amounted to be a care package. You guys have no idea the kind of stuff that Han sent me from judoinside.com. I thought I was just going to get the water bottle and that's it. No sorry, Bob. Absolutely not. That is not all I got. I've got, Han sent me more stuff than I have received on Christmas, my birthday, and my anniversary over the past year. And that's not a slam to anybody who gives me gifts. I'm just saying I got a lot of stuff. Not only did I get my water bottle, I got three more water bottles. I got four 
judo inside small patches i got a judo inside.com back patch that i'm going to put on my gi and i got a judo inside single weave judogi no joke i'm going to put pictures up on my facebook page i highly encourage all of you people who listen to this podcast to take a look at my facebook page and take a look at the swag that hans of judo inside sent me and not only did he send me all that stuff, he sent me a personalized letter, and I would like to read it for you guys. Dear Dave, here is one bottle for you and one additional for the dog. I don't understand yet how someone can fill a judo podcast for an hour, so all my respect. I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> but if you start talking about all the various topics like water bottles, reviews of websites, or some advertising of judoinside.com, even I could fill it. Now let me tell you something. This podcast might only be an hour, but it takes me about nine hours to record the podcast and another 12 to edit it down. So I do a lot of work here. Thank you very much. Continuing on. First of all, you can fill your water bottles now. Yes, I can. Also, some extra bottles so you can make someone very happy. Perhaps you like to have a quiz of somebody who downloaded your podcast many times. Do what you think is good for the show. The idea of the water bottles is exactly is actually that you can have your own back number back patch on the bottle a personalized bottle but personalized is expensive so in this case the judokin judo the judoka name is judo inside and the country judo also i can include messages and small presents in the bottle so it's a goodie bottle anyway it's a great it's great that it's a popular item and strengthens judo inside as a reliable brand of judo and yes it is a reliable brand of judo Now, I won't read the entire thing because there's a lot of stuff here. It's a very long letter, but I just wanted to give you guys the gist of what he was saying. He was also, you know, letting me know that judoinside.com also covers the Paralympic Games and the IBSA, which is the International Blind Judo Association. I actually had no idea that he covers that. So continuing on, uh, all the best and good luck with your show. Obviously, just let me know when you want me to have when you want me to be your Skype guest. Never a problem. Yeah, I can't wait to set up that interview, Hans. It's, I am forever touched by your generosity and I'm forever touched by all of the people that I interact with on this podcast. I believe me, I get, I get a ton of messages. I get a ton of interaction on Reddit. I I get, I get a lot of personal messages and and it's just, I'm very grateful for this podcast and, and being in a position that I can interact with, with so many people around the world. I mean, you know, I talk with with Bozo78 out in Australia. Now, in in normal circumstances, I would never have that conversation. And what initially turned, started off as a gag, I I mean, I got these gifts and and things that I just would have never asked for. And I'm very, I'm very touched. If you could see me, there'd be a tear rolling down my face or something like that, a, a tear of joy. And it's just really special to be a part of this community. It's a special community. It's one that I care about very much and care about the growth of this community. And it's a very small reason why I'm doing this podcast because I think it's important to have more online presence in the social media world. And this is my way to be uh, to to tr- generate more interest in in judo from an from an online perspective because there's only so much I can do locally. But behind this microphone, I feel like I can reach out to a lot more people and, and get a lot more other people motivated to to be more involved. And, and I would just love to be a part of that. Now, speaking of letters and interaction and responses, the Judo Chop Suey podcast got its first voicemail, and I would like to play it for you right now. Hey, what's up, Judo Dave Roman? This is Jonah Yule of Oakland Judo. And it was uh, quite a thrill to be driving in my car and uh, hear you address me directly on your podcast. (laughs) So I decided to take up the challenge and send you a voice note. Hey, man, uh, send me your address and I'll send you an Oakland Judo (laughs) t-shirt. Just as, uh, I don't know, just because, I don't know, just because you want swag. I have some t-shirts laying around. I actually don't have a size large because those sold out pretty quickly. So I have adult medium and I have adult XL. Uh, The XL, it's not a huge one. It runs a little small. So if you're an average size guy, uh, 
you know, like a, you know, between five ten or so, then take an XL, uh, and then shrink, it'll shrink down for you a little bit. If you're a little guy, take a medium. Um, so yeah, if you shoot me your address, it, it's a, it's a nice t-shirt. You, you'll like it. <laughs> and then, and then, Hey, maybe take a picture and post it on your Instagram. <laughs> okay. All right. So about the response to my video, you know, I really don't mind, uh, people have those debates all the time and you know, you can't control what other people say. It's, it's fine. I actually think, uh, it is important to have those discussions. It's not super important as far as learning the technique, but you know, it is an important part of judo to understand the theory and the concept behind things. Like for instance, I always talk about the difference between dashi barai and harai tsurikomiyashi. Uh, harai tsurikomiyashi, there's the, the axis of movement. It's a circle, uh, just like dashi barai, but the circle is, how do I say this? It's turned so that you're facing the edge of the circle. You know what I mean? So it's it's turning towards you. I don't know if that makes any sense. Whereas dashi barai, it's also a circle, but the circle, you know, the, the large side of the circle is towards you, the flat, you know what I mean? So you're, you're turning, you're sweeping, dashi bra, you're sweeping sideways, right? You got to open your hip out and turn to the side, you sweep sideways. Harai tsurikomiyashi, you're pushing the foot directly backwards and pulling the upper body towards you, uke's upper body towards you. So even though they might look very similar to someone you know, to like, you know, white belt or yellow belt or someone who doesn't do any judo, when you're learning the concept, it's important to, to know the difference between those two throws and the different concepts. Um, but yeah, I agree. In general, you know, people make, get too hung up on, on the names of particular throws. I don't particularly care. Um, in general, like I say, what, what throws are called. As long as the guy lands on his back, it's a nice throw. And as far as the tuition, um, boy, that might be a that might be a bigger subject. So um, let me uh, let me send that to you in a in a separate voicemail. I'll just close this one down. Well, thanks for your uh, thanks for the shout out on your uh, on your podcast. All right, that is awesome, Jonah. Thank you so much for the voicemail. I I already got in contact with you about the T-shirt. I can't wait to get it. I'm gonna wear that T-shirt with pride. And I'm just really excited about that. I'm really grateful for your thoughts and opinions regarding the 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 naming of throws and, and getting all hung up on that kind of stuff. I get your point. Uh, it's a point well taken. And now I'll, anoint, I'll announce this now. I am looking to get Jonah on the program to do an interview with him regarding how he runs his club because it's my understanding that he's somebody that, that does run a full-time judo program. Now, I was talking about Travis Stevens' comments last week about how judo instructors should be charging at minimum $100 a, uh, a, a month or else just may as well close your doors. Well, I got a message from Jonah indicating to me that he does this on a full-time basis. So I would like to bring him on the show for him to talk about how he runs his club and how he makes a uh, a, a living out of being a professional judo instructor. So I'm very interested to have that. I'm throwing out the, I threw out the gauntlet last week for anybody to send me voicemails. Jonah responded. Now, Jonah, I'm throwing down the gauntlet again. You got to come on my show. If you can come on sometime this week, let me know when you're available and, and I'll get you on. How about that? So can't wait to have that conversation. Now, I received a message response on on reddit about some of the rambling that i do on my podcast i want to i want to read this for you guys because i this this email really made me laugh or this message really cracked me up he says he goes hey just listen to the podcast i wanted to thank you for your effort at first i wasn't sure i was going to make it through you have some moments of rambling and you sort of remind me of this guy and he sends me this link to this if you go on youtube i'll put the link up there it's, uh, an ad for realfakedoors.com. It's, Get on down to Real Fake Doors. That's us. It's, it's it's a really funny ad. He says, I mean this in a light-hearted light and funny way, not as insult. 
I was happy that you addressed the absurdity of Stevens' comments about pricing and you hit the nail on the head regarding some other topics like Japanese women's belt change. He also says, I'd be very interested for you to discuss the historical shortcoming of USA Judo in depth as a summary of what the issues have been and why. I hear a lot of complaints, but I don't have a context or facts and reasons. Now, I will definitely talk about that at some point. I have really am trying to get somebody on the program that I've talked about before. Uh, she's somebody that, that knows extensively about the issues that USA Judo has had over the past several years. I believe USA Judo's new CEO is trying to fix these things, but I want to get her on. I I I reached out to her on Facebook. I know she saw the message. I For, for the longest time, I sent her a message months ago. I know she saw the message asking her to join the podcast. I just received confirmation from, from the Facebook uh, messaging service that she got the message. I just received that confirmation a couple days ago. Whether or not she responds, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll try her one more time to see if she'll come on the program because it's really an important topic for me to discuss. But, but yeah, so... Along with the rambling, the rambling stuff, you know, I really do edit this podcast down. You guys have no idea how long. I talk for a night. There's my wife. She just slid some food under the door because she knows I'm going to be in here for the long haul. Nine hours of podcasting, not 12 hours of editing, also and I'm true. going to condense, give you guys a highlight at the very end of the podcast after... Gangnam Style plays. The very end of the podcast, I'm going to give you some bonus audio where you can hear some of the crap that didn't make it into the podcast. I've condensed it down to about two minutes so you guys can have an understanding of how hard I work Not at pre presenting this podcast and bringing to you some judo content. Now, speaking of judo content, I want to talk about the... Q&A that Marius Weiser had on Twitter. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there are a couple of questions and a couple of answers that I thought were very interesting. I'm going to run down these questions. I'm not going to see, I'm not going to tell you who asked the questions because there's just some really odd Twitter handles. I'm not even going to attempt it. So uh, some of the questions here. What are the chances we can get a bronze medal match broadcasts and instead of having them ran simultaneously? Now, this person he brings up a really good point because when I watch the live feed of the uh, of the Grand Prix and the Grand Slams, they have both of the bronze matches going on. I have to open up two browsers when I watch it, and one of them has the audio, one of them doesn't. So, watching two matches at the same time like that, especially for something that's so important like a bronze medal match. That that's a that's a money match. So you gotta. I think you, you. This person brings up a good point. Mr. Visor's response is: We would like to do that always, but sometimes it depends on the local logistics and infrastructure of the broadcaster. However, we will try and do our best in this regard. Let's see. He somebody else asks: Would you like to see Teddy Reiner compete more frequently? How can you achieve this? Uh, Mr. Vi's response, Teddy is a great athlete and a big champion, but frankly speaking, I would like to see him more often in the big events. And I agree. I, I don't know what, you know, maybe uh, the French Judo Association has a plan for Teddy over this next uh, coming year. I don't know if he's going to compete in the next Olympics. I don't know if he's going to retire. We, we've not heard much from Teddy, but I agree. There's been a lot of big stars that, that have not competed. I don't know. Uh, Shoei Ono hasn't competed. Uh, Fabio Basile, who's doing the Italian version of Dancing with the Stars right now, he hasn't competed in any events. Uh, Mashu Baker hasn't complete, competed in any events. Uh, Majlinda Kalmendi, he, she competed in one event, but she hasn't been back since. So I don't know what coaches and the judo associations for their respective countries, if they have a game plan of which tournaments they're going to tackle. I would think the major ones, you would want that, that tournament because it's going to give you points. But maybe that doesn't matter right now because it's everybody's gearing up for the world championships uh, instead of worrying about points to make it to the Olympics. But So I don't know all the details regarding how if, if these people need points to get into the world championships if they're stacking tournaments a certain way. I don't know, but I, I do find it interesting that there's been a a tremendous amount of absence from the 
gold and silver medal winners um, in many of these IJF tournaments. Let's see. Um, somebody asks, what can we expect from this year's World Judo Day in terms of activities? And Mr. Visor says, courage. This is a theme for World Judo Day 2017 on October 28th, the birthday of our founder, Jigoro Kano. Now, I, I, it's kind of cool to get some, some global exposure to to judo and, and world judo day. But I, I think the, I would like to see the IJF do more. I certainly will do my best to pump this up as best I can. And, and I, I would like to see, I, I don't know. I would like to see them do more. I, I don't know what they can do more from a global scale to get the name out there. But as I've talked about so frequently on this podcast that I think judo as a whole needs to do a better job of being online and having an online presence. And because I, I pointed this out, the, the IBJJF has more Twitter followers than than uh, than the I, IJF. And I don't think that should be. I don't where in Twitter it represents a, a global following, not just a following in the United States and Brazil. So I don't know what the deal is, but I would like to see more online. I would like to see more people like Jonah and and other club level. Uh, judo instructors put out videos on YouTube. Show your favorite stuff, and you know, we, like I talked about last week, and like Jonah did in his his voicemail this week, that a lot of people do get hung up on the names, and he understands why the naming is important, and I certainly understand why the naming is important. But I think if we do a let a, a a lot less talking about the naming and and a lot more showing online. Uh, our different techniques, things that we like to do, we can we can start getting our own larger presence online. You know, let's say on YouTube or some of the other video sites. Speaking of which, and here I go rambling again. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but YouTube has become terrible with the ads. Most of the time, when I'd watch a video, I would, I would the the advertisement for the video would stop uh, would start, and then I could click on. You know, after five seconds, skip skip to video or whatever. Well, now I'm being for. It seems like every other video I'm watching, I'm being forced to watch advertisements. And and there's times I'm like, well, screw it. I'm not. I I don't need to sit here for thirty seconds to watch a video that's going to be forty five seconds long. This is ridiculous. And I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but YouTube is getting worse. And I get it. They got to make money and. And advertisers pay for advertising space and yada, yada, yada. I, I get that. But come on. This is Google. How much money? How much more money does Google need to make? I, I, they have that YouTube Red. It's a subscription service. I'm not, I'm not buying in just yet. I know YouTube is going to get into providing some basic tier television. That I can't wait for because I've cut the cord. I no longer have cable television. I, I just do... Netflix and Amazon Prime, that's it. And that's good enough for me. So anyway, continuing on. Oh, he he uh, he read one of my questions. I have noticed, it's, this is me, at La Vida Judoka on Twitter. I have noticed the women's division have more Ippon and less Hansukumaki. Why do you think that is happening? Mr. Visor, probably because they are respecting more the gentle way of Judo and they are more disciplined compared to the men. Smiley face. No, that's kind of interesting. The president of the International Judo Federation gave me a... Actually, it's a winky smiley face. So that was a little bit of surprise. That was a little bit of a surprise uh, response from him. But I'm very grateful that, that the president of the IJF responded to my question. Let's see. There is... Uh, there Now, I'm going to finish this with two questions. One I thought was... These were the two biggest questions that I got out of this. And here's the first question. In Japan, judo's popularity is decreasing even though Japanese judokas get many, many medals at Rio game. What do you think about it? Mr. Visor's response. Even in a modern society like Japan is today, I consider that they should conserve and transmit to the next generations the spirit and traditions of Japanese values and judo is one of them. Now, this fellow who asked this question, I responded to him directly. I didn't respond to in the thread, including, um, you know, Marius Visor. And he, I asked him, hey, 
why do you think this is? This is, I, I, I never knew this, that judo's popularity is continuing to decrease. So I asked him and he responded to me that a lot of people in Japan see judo as a dangerous activity. I didn't know that. Is, is, is there any other Japanese judoka out there that listen to this podcast or, or anybody that have a very familiar with Japanese mindset and culture? Is, is that true? I know over the past several years, probably over the past 10 years since I've started judo, 11 now, that I have read several stories, maybe a total of five or six stories, where Japanese judoka have died during training because of really bad judo practices. And and by practices, I don't mean just just the, the club itself, but training methodologies, like ri- ridiculous amount, like... I. I I can't think of one story off the top of my head. I know that that I have read. I, I can't think of one story in particular, but I know that I have read a, a story a couple of years ago where this some J- Japanese student was was being thrown repeatedly with Osotogari and ended up getting a concussion and he died the next day. I, I like I, I, that that happens now. We do hear tragic stories in the United States with different sports that are popular, in, in particular football, American football, that sometimes you get these old school coaches that are like, oh, you, you know, back in my day, we didn't we didn't drink water during practice. You know, I'm, I'm a big hillbilly in Florida, and I like to make the kids run laps and not give them water. There's a lot of old school guys like that. They're morons. But they're there. And sometimes they get into these positions of authority when it comes to coaching kids. And every once in a while, you do hear a kid collapsing during a football practice and 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 needing needing to be hydrated or even worse. Every once in a while, they, so I've heard stories of kids dying. And you've got these idiot coaches out there, too, who be like, you, you the kid obviously is concussed on the field. And they're really, oh, you just got ding. Just shake it off, kid. Get back out there. We need you. And and I hate that attitude. And maybe that kind of attitude in its own way is prevalent in Japan. I'm not criticizing them. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying maybe it is. I have no idea. So if anybody out there can speak to that, I would love to hear from you. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a tweet. Shoot me a, a, a message on Facebook. I, I would love to hear from that. If you need a reminder, my email is judochopsuishow at gmail.com. Now, the last question that's that, that I wanted to highlight here is something that I found very interesting. So this person asks, what is the progress on preparing for the World Judo Championships in North Korea, given the, their current political tensions there? And Mr. Visor's response is, we are in the process of reevaluating this opportunity and probably we will postpone until a more peaceful period. Now, I bre- I almost talk when I heard about the IGF looking to get into the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, otherwise known as North Korea. Hello North Korea. Hello. I almost delved into that topic. But I decided to sit this one, that one out. I believe this was way back in episode three when talking about the refereeing and coaching seminar that was held in Baku, Azerbaijan. And I was going to talk about this, but I decided, you know what? I'm not going to touch this subject just yet until I know for sure if this is really going to happen or if it's just talked about it. Well, thank God that the IJF came to their senses about this. Look, I'm not going to get political here. I don't want to get political, but it's really short-sighted and foolish to look to have a judo tournament, a major judo tournament, junior world championships in North Korea. And while it's admirable and understandable for the IGF's desire to spread judo throughout the entire world, I just think their attempts to trying to get into North Korea, a rogue nation, a a nation that has documented human rights abuses, I think it's very short-sighted. Look, 
We can talk about the starving people. We can talk about the fact that they're completely unhinged, this leadership, uh, constantly doing missile tests. They're, they're like a wild dog that's on the loose and, and completely answers to nobody. And, and this country just... Kim Jong-un recently had his brother assassinated with a nerve agent, a chemical weapon, in a public place. And this is not the first time he has had family members assassinated. A couple years ago, he killed his uncle. I mean, and, and just last week, they had a failed missile test, which exploded within seconds uh, on Wednesday. And the test is a single example of a long list of examples to which North Korea continually threatens South Korea and her allies, which is predominantly the United States. And look... I get that nobody is truly, truly blameless in these type of situations. And look, South Korea and United States, a lot of times they have uh, what you call uh, joint drills and in joint military exercises near the border to flex their strength and to kind of, you know, in their own way, give the middle finger to North Korea. So North Korea responds with, missile tests and and things like that it's it's really ridiculousness and and south korea is not the only country that is being threatened by north korea early uh, before last week i think uh, about a month or two ago north korea fired four missiles in the general direction of japan and it was reported that these missiles fell 200 miles off the coast of japan now while 200 miles seems like a, a long distance it really isn't I know I would be completely freaked out if some country shot missiles toward the United States and they landed somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico or they landed 200 miles off the coast of Florida's beaches. I mean, that is a threat. And I just think it's absurd that the IJF would even attempt to get in there. You can't talk about North Korea without talking about the politics. I mean, if you want to have an idea how bad Kim Jong-un is, go talk to Dennis Rodman. He could tell you how horrible he is. He's my friend. I don't, I don't the world. He's my, he's my friend. I love him. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Look, I don't think Marius Weiser wants to look like the next Dennis Rodman. And... I don't know if there's some kind of a long game involved with Marius Pfizer getting up, getting involved with North Korea. If, if he's trying to play diplomat here in, in a way that other nations cannot be in that position. But between missile tests, between hard labor camps, imprisonment, starvation, assassinations, and a lot of these other things that have been well documented about North Korea, I just think it's very short-sighted of the IJF to even attempt to get into this country. And not only that, I just, it just in general, I think it's a very bad idea for the IJF to pursue holding tournaments in countries where people are trying to flee on a daily basis. I don't think the IJF should, should give any sort of legitimacy to countries that treat their own citizens in that way. For example, I, I don't think the IJF should plan to hold any events in Damascus, Syria. I think the IJF should cross Mogadishu off the list and other and those types of places like that. The IJF should not be trying to hold a juniors event in Pyongyang. I, I mean, I just think it's I just think it's terrible idea, and I would love to meet the person in the IJF or anywhere who thinks a tournament in any of these places is a good idea. I just think to unnecessarily put juniors at risk is is very, very foolish. And I'm glad that the IJF is, is stepping away from this thing and they should continue to step away from this thing. Do not allow any tournaments to happen in North Korea because that country is about to fall apart, in my opinion. You can sit there and say that I'm listening to fake news or I'm just getting my my news from sources that are, are biased, and maybe that's true, but you can't convince me that what's going on in North Korea and to the North Koreans is a good thing. 
especially when you have people trying to run across the border and sneak over to South Korea for decades. This isn't, this isn't like me going to Canada or going to Mexico. This is a completely different situation. If anybody thinks that going into these type of countries is a good idea, shoot me an email. You can change my mind. Maybe you can change my mind and give me a different perspective that I'm not considering. And I'm not coming at this issue from the standpoint of, oh, America is number one and we're the great beacon of democracy. That's not what I'm trying to say here. But we, and I understand the IJF has to do business and has to hold tournaments in countries where they have documented human rights violations and and other issues that are going on in those countries that are less than ideal for their citizens. I understand that the IGF has to look past that because judo truly is a global activity. It's a global sport. And we have to, we cannot deliberately look to be exclusive to any particular person. But there are just some lines that shouldn't be crossed. And like I said, they're trying to put a, a, a tournament in Pyongyang or in Mogadishu or, or in Damascus, especially with all the things that are going on. Very short-sighted. I, 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 just, I just think it's a bad idea. If you think differently, go ahead and send me an email and, le- and let me know. I would like to remind you all that there will not be a podcast next week. Or, uh, because I will be going to WrestleMania next week and I simply will not have the time to do a podcast for you wonderful people. And I, I regret not being able to uh, do a podcast, but there's just simply not going to be enough hours in the day for me to get something done. So I would suggest you guys listen to original judo podcast by James Austin. He just interviewed Matt Diakino, and it was a very good interview, I must say. Um, he's, he's doing a very good job with that podcast next weekend is another major judo tournament in Tbilisi in Georgia. It's the Tbilisi Grand Prix or is it a Grand Slam? I I can't remember which one, but, but that's going to be going on all weekend next weekend. So you'll have some, you'll have plenty of judo content to listen to. Go watch the tournament online. I will be sure to cover that. When my guest co-host comes on the program, Joe Kaiser, he will become he will be joining me on on the in two weeks. Two weeks. He'll be joining me in two weeks to talk about the 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 Brazilian jiu-jitsu, to talk about judo, to talk about the things that he likes and dislikes between both arts. He's we're gonna talk it, it, at a high level regarding the tournament in Tbilisi. And and it's gonna we're gonna just have a great old time. It's it's gonna be great to have a co-host. I'm sure you guys will like having a different voice on the program. Now, I can't guarantee you that I'm gonna always have a co-host, so don't get used to it. Don't don't come to me and say, man, that podcast was awesome. It sucks when it's just you. I I, I don't want to hear it. Sorry, but I'll do my best um, with that particular podcast. I can't wait to to have him on the program. Uh, I haven't seen him in in several months, so it'll be good to catch up. I'll I'll try not to do too much catching up on the podcast. So anyway, with that, I'm going to cut it short this week. Uh, I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a I hope you have a great week training judo or jujitsu or krav maga or kung fu or whatever it is that you like to do. Hope you have a great week doing that. Train hard. Stay safe out there. Until next time. I'm out. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. As promised, here's a sampling of things that did not make it into the Judo Chop Suey podcast. Greetings and salutations to everybody out there in podcast land. This is the Judo Chop Suey podcast, and I'm your host, a douchebag. A big, stinking douchebag. All by myself. Give me back my son! I talked to Travis Stevens the other day to find out if he was willing to backtrack from his statements that judo clubs should charge at least $100 a month considering he wasn't taking all things into account. 
And he told me, and this is a direct quote, it's all about the Benjamins. Uh, you want controversial statements? I'll give you controversial statements. Jagoro Kano was a fraud. Helio Gracie was a fraud. George Dillman and his dim mock punch? Totally legit. My darling, I can't get enough of your love, babe. My god, how the hell did these ducks get in here? Get out of here! Get, get out! Come on! The United States could actually learn a great deal from North Korea. The last time I placed a bet on a fight was in 1994 for UFC 2. I put all my money on Fred Edish defeating Hoist Gracie. Guess that didn't turn out very well for me, did it? Oh my god, that fart stinks! I mean, I, I, I know farts aren't supposed to smell good, but jeez, that's just... Oh! Oh, that's awful! God! Oh, G.I. Joe! If I'm being honest, I think Akito's better than Judo. Marius Pfizer had a Twitter Q&A on Monday, and he talked a lot about things that I wanted to... Hey, hey, hold... Hey, hey, stop it. Put, put down... Put it down. Put down the... Put down the beer. Put... Get... Give me the beer! Give me back my beer! Get... Get back here! <laughs>